So this is the only difference that there is in the presentation. And all the other slides are the same. OK. So we started with questions. We, our task, and I've already said that before, we should never, never, never get to the point that people ask us questions. Because we cannot, if, if they ask questions, it's a lot more difficult to control the discussion. So let's say that we drive the discussion when we talk with people, or either we find a way of uh, subverting the situation. For instance, of course I make personal examples because I am more uh, familiar with them. When uh, I met the guys at the Ministry of Defense, the first question was, how LibreOffice compares in terms of security with Microsoft Office? And my answer was, wrong question. The right one is, how Microsoft Office compares with LibreOffice in terms of security? And I said, why? Because you always compare the best with the worst, not the opposite. So they, you know, this way, you, people start to say, how, I mean, Either this guy is crazy, uh, and I think they were thinking, uh, you know, getting, a, I wore a jacket for the first time in 20 years when at the Ministry of Defense, but it was just a jacket uh, with the excuse that I have a bird, I don't, never wear a tie. But then when I met the top guns uh, at, the, at the Ministry, I, I even wore a tie. Uh, but, for instance, I, my, 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 I, I am not making any advertising, but my, my brand, my favorite brand of garments is Timberland, just because I have the same body of a Vermont woodcutter, and therefore a Timberland is perfect for my measures. So I can buy a Timberland shirt and Timberland trousers without getting them shorter or making them bigger. So it's, and I think this is because I look li really like a Vermont woodcutter. And uh, so can you imagine someone entering a, a place where everyone stays like this uh, with Timberland trousers, Timberland uh, uh, shirt, and a Timberland jacket and green shoes? So probably they were already thinking I was crazy. And with my answer, they, they said, OK, he's gone. I mean, over 60 years, is the brain is probably mashed potatoes. Uh, but, but that also ring the bell in their, in their mind. Because if I am brave enough to say to revert a question where they, they were sure that was the right one, probably this raised their interest. And of course, the second slide that I show was the number of vulnerabilities. At the time, it was a little bit different. It was 9 for LibreOffice and 121 for Microsoft Office. It changes on a quarterly basis. Actually, it's becoming better for Microsoft Office because of the Office of an XML format. So the last 20, over 20 vulnerabilities are memory corruption on the, on the, on the file format, which is the worst uh, user-wise, because it's the kind of vulnerability that allows to make injection of anything inside the, inside a file without that the software realize that something has happened to the file so you really install anything like uh, ransomware and so on just by double clicking on the attachment. So of course, uh, let's say that the objective, if we are proactive, is to avoid. I understand that it's not easy. It's not easy. We go into these offices as the incumbent. Why? Free software is better, better quality, better security, better business model. Uh, 
Microsoft business model goes back to the 80s and is based on uh, a false assumption is that you cannot sell a license but you can only you cannot sell a software but you can only sell a license so there 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 it's based on the fact that they with with these and this is due to bill gates genius so you transform something from a good to a false service because you are selling uh, the license to use and you create a false scarcity of the of 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 a, of a good because a software once developed is easy to duplicate even in the ages on of cds i mean it was very easy and and not not expensive and we were paying uh, hundreds of euros or dollars or hundreds of thousands of liras or Deutschmarks uh, in the past uh, to get a license which value was a lot lower and the value was based on, this, on the artificial scarcity. So this is not a nice business model but of course people have never thought about this business model but if you, if you point them on, on the right spot they start thinking and say you're right. I mean why I, I spend in some cases, they spend 8 million euro per year. You say, so you spend 8 million euro per year and you basically are buying nothing. Uh, is that a sound purchase or not? So we should be more aggressive. If you are, I mean, if you don't want to be aggressive, call me, I am. Okay? Uh, we have to tell people, I mean, we are to... We, 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 have, we have not to go there like modest guys that say, you know, we are from the free software environment. I mean, we are from the free software environment. We, our model is based on sharing knowledge. That is the way to go forward for the, for, for the globe. Since the internet was started. Sharing knowledge is the basis. Think about Wikipedia, think about this kind of stuff. Everything, now the, 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 the culture goes forward by sharing the knowledge, not by keeping each one his own knowledge. So be proud of being into an environment that has a modern business model instead of being shy about having a, yes, the business, the, the, the only reality is that our business model is not yet making the same amount of money of the Microsoft business model. But uh, the, the fact that many people, there are products and there are technologies that have, have never been the best and have been the, the most sold and this is the same, uh, for, for instance, I'm an expert on uh, alcohols. Uh, Zacapa Room is just disgusting. It's the most sold worldwide because they have very good marketing. I can tell you that Caroni Room, uh, if you want to taste it, you have to come to my house, uh, is absolutely the best rum in the world they don't sell more than 1,000 bottles per year. No marketing. So uh, Microsoft has the money. What, what Bill Gates has been really genius, is, uh, authentically genius, is in the fact to understand that his business model could stay and could, 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 could flourish by investing in marketing. If you think today, they're investing a lot more in other areas. So Microsoft is the company worldwide that spends more on lobby. They spend $1 billion more than Monsanto. If you don't know Monsanto, Monsanto is killing people with OGM. So if a software company spends more than a company that kills people with OGM, I think that people should start asking themselves a few questions. Microsoft has 248 lawyers on their payroll. I don't know how many, uh, 
I mean, 248 lawyers, it's more than uh, any other organization worldwide, including uh, petrol companies and so on. So, but this is, something, these are, this is something that, of course, impressed the guys that we are talking with. But, and we have to use these numbers. This is competitive marketing. Competitive marketing means be bastard enough to look into the other guy numbers and find the weak spot. It's not doing any, any nice thing. Absolutely not. The, when I look into Microsoft numbers, my secret uh, dream is to see close business on uh, one Microsoft Plaza in uh, Redmond. I, I know it's not nice. It's 90,000 90, people worldwide, they will find another job. So go again, uh, uh, these, are, uh, uh, these were more answering questions that let, let's go back to the, to the uh, competitive stuff. This also is competitive. When we have a, a format that is way better than uh, Microsoft format. It is way better simply because uh, it, is, it has no lock-in mechanism behind. When uh, I talk to people, I always tell them, uh, if you choose ODF, we, we, tell, we, we are crazy, so crazy that I'm telling you to choose ODF because you can abandon, if you choose ODF, you can abandon LibreOffice tomorrow morning without a single euro or dollar of expense because the, the format is the same. And people, in some cases, people ask me, so you, 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 are, you, are telling me, you, you are telling me to use LibreOffice, but also that if I use ODF, I can change my mind. It will not cost anything. I said, yes, because this is basically, first, if uh, we don't lock you in with technology, we have the incentive of, doing, uh, of improving the product on a daily basis. And if you, if you make a product that is locking in the users, you lose the incentive of improving the product. So think who locks you in and think which are the incentive of improving the product. Uh, so, and I always make the comparison. So if people ask me, can you describe ODF? I never get into the details you know, namespaces. Uh, I can probably, uh, if necessary, spend hours on the technical details of ODF versus of Office Open XML, uh, explaining that uh, Office Open XML uh, have different namespaces according to the transitional version. But I would not speak the language of, my, of the people I'm talking to even if those guys have uh, written on their, on their business card experts on document formats. Experts on document format means I open a lot of documents during my work day, okay? They will never know anything in terms of technology, in terms of te technical detail. So why we should lose t time in explaining technical detail? It's a lot more effective showing uh, this and saying this is not interoperability, then showing this and say, you know, nice, looks like uh, th this is 2000 after uh, Jesus Christ, but it looks like 2000 before, uh, which is the, I mean, of course, don't do that because you, you, you're shaking your head. This is a developer attitude, okay? I'm not talking to developers. I, on purpose, I, I mean, I would, I would be useless in talking to developers because my language is not that. Uh, I'm talking to people, but people that take decisions, is, they're not developers usually. So you have to astonish them saying, 
So you agree on the fact that this is false interoperability. I mean, it's, what you see is interoperable, but the, the, the code below is not. If the computer fails, you will see another document. And the computer can fail. Or you, you can have a different operating system. Or you can have a different version of the operating system. You can have a different font. While uh, I show that, and, and it's easy, you know, it, this is even, I can tell you that this is a very old document, but I didn't have the incentive to, uh, to make a new one because no one has ever asked about uh, wh wh which version of LibreOffice has been created this document. This is actually a document that goes back to 2010. So it's five years old. I should make it new, but if no one asks you anything and looks at that and says, is that true? Yes, it's true. This is what happens. It's easy for the computer to represent that. There's no, it has not to interpret anything. It has just to show a text. Of course, this is very, a very simplistic view of the, 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 the stuff, but this is what people want to get. They want to be impressed by data. And also, with Coverity Scan, I, I, I show this, and I show this one. It's not because people can say, but you know, this one year may, may mean nothing. And this fixed year, how the hell have you fixed 12,944? But no one looks at that. They, they, they look at one outstanding. And that's the answer. Then I point them to the line of code, because of course if it was one line of code, one outstanding, that was not the same. But it's eight million line of code, one outstanding. Do you have another question? Or this is enough? This is just impressing people. In French, uh, we would say, épater le bourgeois. But this is what we have to do. And this again, I know that this is, uh, there are some developers now in, uh, I know this is meaningless under the development point of view. This frightens enough people that have to deploy Microsoft Office. And uh, this is enough for me. When I explain them that in three years they they have the risk of getting a broken document was more than once a month. You can understand that if they deploy, let's say, 10,000 workstation, they, in their mind, they start multiplying the risk of twice a month for 10,000 workstation. What does it mean? Then in some cases, as we call it, we, in Italy we say factor, the C factor, uh, the C factor uh, because we call this part of the body culo, okay? It's not a nice word, but it's technically, it's that one. I was talking, I was presenting this slide to the government of Canton Ticino two months ago. When I was talking about this, they got a call about the ransomware installed in a machine. It was a triumph. I mean, they started asking, oh, but so you mean that if we install LibreOffice, we get rid of that? And of course, I said, yeah, of course, I mean, <laughs> of course. Don't ask silly questions. Of course, you get rid of every stupid uh, virus or annoyance. Yeah. Uh, so that is, this is competitive marketing in our case, is just making, uh, trying to, unfortunately, scare the people. After 20 years, they don't have doubts about the fact that Microsoft Office is working, and by the way, it's working decently. Uh, but, w so we have to scare them. That's the only way where we can really give them an incentive to try LibreOffice. And, uh, in some other cases, of course, to try free software because th there is a similar, a similar uh, 
situation. But so far, I'm the only one that I've met that is keeping track of vulnerabilities of LibreOffice against Microsoft Office. I was doing that with OpenOffice before. Uh, I've never met anyone handling a, a, pro, a, a free software product being familiar with the vulnerabilities of the proprietary equivalent. I think that we should be on a weekly basis as I, as I am uh, on the National Institute of Standard and Technology database and look at that because this is helping a lot. And uh, I'm almost finished. Yes. Uh, so this is about the call, as there are some new ladies coming in. Uh, the, the two Italian ladies, they, they already know the, the, the gimmick. So that, uh, but uh, this is the way that uh, Red is described in, uh, uh, in a, with a computer, so it's uh, FF00. And if you look at LibreOffice and Microsoft Office, the way of uh, describing it is completely different. Again, this slide enough. Uh, this slide alone uh, uh, helps uh, in uh, creating doubts about Office Open XML. And uh, my description uh, for the guys that are new to this uh, is that Microsoft Office is the diogenes vision of Plato's man. Plato's man was an animal with two legs and no feathers. And Diogenes said that a chicken is a man. And uh, I say that Microsoft Office is the equivalent of this chicken to a real man. And the real man, of course, is LibreOffice. And I finish if you have questions. Otherwise, I will be here for the three days. So thank you. <laughs>